It's not often you get to see yourself portrayed in a movie. So what does Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak think of the Jobs film? He is with me now here in the studio. Thank you so much for stopping by. You saw the midnight showing last night. I, I'm sure you were really interested to see what was going to be on screen. What did you think? Well, I figured whatever it was, I'd probably be disappointed. I had high, high hopes, and I didn't want to talk to press, so I went to midnight showing so I could be alone. And, um, and what I thought, well, you know what? I had one of the most entertaining nights of my life last night because I saw a Brandy Carlisle concert before the movie. Oh, okay. Well, what about the movie? <laughs> um, the movie was, my, in my mind, it was, I, I thought the acting was great for the roles they were assigned. I don't think the movie covered the subjects. When, when you cover, uh, when you make a movie about something that's real in life, you can never get it, like really the personalities right, because you don't know how to read about a lot of the, the smaller personalities. You cannot get it right, but the concept of each scene, what it implies should be right. And there were a lot of things wrong that I knew from myself with Steve Jobs and other people's relationship with Steve Jobs. In those days, it was not like that. When Ashton referred to OpenStep being a, a great uh, at, um, attribution to Apple, that that was correct. And open step was when Steve Jobs came back mature enough to execute and know what was good and what was valuable and could sell and make the company something. It did not bring Apple to a higher valuation than um, it ever got to with the Apple II. The only product we had making money for the first 10 years, the entire time frame of the movie was only was really the Apple II. You know, and, and so Steve Jobs, the movie covers a whole period that doesn't fit what Ashton's talking about. The iPod was Steve Jobs' Apple II. That was a great, great product, and it was due to that, that incredible focus and care about the consumer and getting the right product. And that was great, and that was equal to the Apple II in value in dollars as well as, you know, its meaning to the world. Of course, we had to go open and open it up to Windows. We didn't say you have to have a Macintosh to use iTunes, for example. So what do you think was the biggest mistake in the movie? What was the most misleading thing about it? The, um, I think it was really Ashton has too much of this, this fan thing like a cult leader. And, oh, my gosh, Steve Jobs has always been the great top people and could not see that he, was, he had a lot of flaws in knowing how to run things and execute and make products that were worthwhile during his time there. So you're saying the movie over-glorifies Steve Sure. Jobs. Yeah, it didn't talk about a lot of things when Steve was, was, it made it look like he's forced out of the company for no good reason. And it doesn't get into what the reasons really were. They didn't talk to any, any of the people. Um, it's, you know, what was really going on in the company that was bad at the time. And, you know, you have to realize that Steve kept trying to make his own computer. My Apple II took the, uh, by the way, he didn't take me to a homebrew computer club. <laughs> you know, I had been there. There were people in the club that had my computer that I'd helped them build that were using it. I'd given it out for free to everyone before Steve even knew it existed. So this was, these kind of things are all phony. Like, he's the one directing all of the wisdom and intelligence, and it was really coming from other people. He was a good filter for it, is better. In these time frames, he, he failed with the Apple III, he failed with the Lisa, he failed with the Macintosh. People don't know from that movie how deeply the Macintosh failed, how deeply our stock slid down, how we had to re group quickly and, re and build a Macintosh market over three years while we had huge revenues from the Apple II and how Steve was trying to kill the Apple II in a lot of ways and do very unfair, unrealistic things to it. That's not known. There are obviously so many twists and turns to the Apple story that I think would be impossible to get in a two-hour movie. Let's talk about Ashton's portrayal of Steve. Did he get that right? Um, I actually liked his portrayal of it, and I felt it was a good choice to pick somebody who was into technology. You know, it's just he didn't understand the, he wasn't there living those times, or I think it would have been, a lot of things would have been portrayed very differently. And um, I don't know, it was the producer. I think Ashton was probably in a producer role as well in coming out with how Steve should treat other people. Um, so what did he do right? Like, and like what did there he were do very, wrong? there were very good, intelligent people that were that were did not deserve the demeaning character that Steve put on them. Mike Markla, who funded us, he was Steve's mentor. He was the one that taught Steve how to run and build a company. It wasn't vice versa, you know. It wasn't like Steve's working the deals on this guy who's been around the block for you know a lot of time. Is Ashton same thing, same thing with John, John Is Scully. Ashton over glorifying Steve Jobs, or has the world over in the time in the in the time frame that people are interested in the early days of the company, yes, he's over glorifying him and not getting to the truth. And it's based upon the great Steve Jobs that came back mature, capable of executing. That means actually accomplishing visions. Steve had great vision of things like the Macintosh, 
by the way, in the movie, they showed Steve like so important and Jeff Raskin running our Macintosh group as being kind of nothing. Jeff Raskin's the one who took us to Xerox Park Center. He's the one that, that had been, you know, taught classical music in, in universities as well as was a technician. He brought human versus technology, human over technology into Apple and into the world. And he was treated like so shabbily in the movie. No, I didn't like seeing a lot of people I know not get the respect that they deserved in their relationship of really giving Steve Jobs the goods. What about Josh Gad's portrayal of you? It's not you often what, you get to see yourself he, played I, in a movie. The way, I think the way the routine, the, the role was written, um, there were a lot of things in there that never happened. Me leaving Steve Jobs, you know, and saying stuff. But, um, but I think he played it very well. Yeah, I think he acted well. I was glad they chose a good actor. As a matter of fact, most of the actors in there, I thought, did a very good acting job. And that means a lot to me when I see a movie. It just, something about, it wasn't a story of one strong conflict and suspense. You're waiting for the end that really got to me that made me, you know, want to recommend it more than mild entertainment. Okay. And I did laugh at places. Oh, boy, I, boy, did I laugh when they made a joke about... I was carrying my own weight because I was skinny back in those days, but I laughed because I like good jokes. It's good humor. I even laughed when I told some Polish jokes. Well, good. I'm glad there are some lighthearted moments in the movie. Steve, you have been talking nonstop through the break about this. You are so fired up about it. You think that the movie got a lot of things wrong, and yet Ashton Kutcher has said you didn't consult on this movie. Why not? You, you were offered. <laughs> they offered uh, f to have you come in you and consult with them. Hmm? and tell them more about what really happened, but sure. you decided not to, why not? Sure, I got an early script, I read it, my wife read it, and we were kind of abhorred by it, and if somebody else has started a creative process of designing something, writing a script, you don't come in and, oh, push them out, and it's gotta be this way, there's no way you can correct it, it was a hard job. Secondly, I dis just did not like certain things in that script at all, some because they were so wrong from the truth. Why not tell them they're wrong? Why not tell them? Um, I have a very busy life, and it came at a very busy time in my life when I traveled the world giving speeches, hardly ever home. So I also had a busy time, but they, were, they wanted to pay money. And so did the Sorkin film. Right, so you, you know are what? consulting on Aaron Sorkin's film, which has not, has not been I, titled, it's in process. I am consulting, and you know what? There's, as far as I know, there's no script written. In other words, they will take the input, the input from the first-hand sources, and create a script from it, rather than a first-hand source coming in, can you modify our script a little here and there? That wouldn't have worked. It was, so I really how is that like project it. going so you know, so And you know, what, you know what? Some, some, uh, I saw a trailer about the Ashton Kutcher film, mm -hmm. and it was so wrong and backwards of Steve directing something towards me when it was really the opposite in real life and you know what and I commented about that and he, he headline said that I, I said the movie was crappy I never said that once because I don't say it till I see it and and so Ashton Kusher said that I was saying the movie was lousy because I was being paid by the other one you know what I don't do things my principles aren't affected by money in the movie you'll see that there were a whole bunch of people that helped us start this company hung around the garage and all those people got Steve Jobs in the movie Steve Jobs it was really not Steve Jobs himself um, said they don't get any stock and we at the top get all of it. So you know what I did? I took my stock and I gave them huge blocks. I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not right, gonna you, you the gave people so your huge. own stock. We know but, that story really well. What words do you have for Ashton Kutcher? What would you like to say to him? You know what? I'm really easy to get a hold of. He could have he called me and consulted over the phone anytime. I got from Daniel Kotke, who's a star in the film and a consultant, I got the, the email address of his management company to email him to tell him I had not said that the movie was lousy because mm -hmm. I hadn't seen it, you know? And I never got an email back. So, so, how, so what was Steve Jobs really like? How visionary was Steve Jobs? He was. He always took the role of you have to somehow think higher level thoughts and put this air of mystique on, which is vision, and it's got to be. But and is your vision accurate? Uh, he was not that good at executing. In other words, coming up with a vision that was makeable into profits today, a product that people wanted enough that a company could be could make a profit on it. He wasn't until he returned. Then he was more stable and exercised and into the operations of a company. Then was he a he understood visionary? It. Well, he was a visionary before. Mm -hmm. No, he was a visionary with, with the Macintosh and seeing this was the future. You know what? There were a whole bunch of us that were the visionaries. Jeff Raskin, who took us there, and Bill Atkinson. Mm -hmm. And we all saw it and said, oh my, once you have this, you'll never go back. How can we make it at a price it can sell? The lease that cost 20000 of today's dollars, mm -hmm. $10,000 then. It's shown in the movie. That's too much for a personal computer. If you wait a few years, the price has come down, and now it's affordable. And we kind of gave Microsoft the idea to do it once it was affordable. Steve, do you think Steve Jobs gets too much too much credit 
Oh, no, I never try to think that. No, no. <laughs> no. Well, sometimes in some areas he gets credit for what other people deserve. But you know what? No, he actually, um, he actually seems to be... Um, I don't know. Maybe he was trying to orchestrate being everything seems to come from him when it came from large groups of people. He acknowledges everyone, really. He was always very friendly and nice to me. Mm -hmm. So I'd say no. I think he's, he's the greatest technology leader of, of, our, of our lives. I think he did a lot to improve my life and your life and uh, deserves that credit. Yeah, you say Ashton Kutcher got a lot of things wrong. Uh, that's for the early stage. That's mm -hmm. When Steve Jobs came back to Apple from that point on, um, yes, he knew how to execute, how to run a company, and how to make products that people wanted and that were good. And it was still some time before he had that big success with the, the iPod, and it was going open. So, I, no, so I, I, I really admire Steve Jobs. I just don't think the movie um, is, is accurate the way it portrays his relationship with others. In the break, I asked you if you read Walter Isaacson's book, and you said you hadn't. You don't read Apple books. Why not? Uh, I read them in the early days, and they always had the early start of Apple so wrong, so missing the important facts. I mean, if you want to see how to be a young technologist and come up with ideas to build products that will change the world, read my book, I Was. That's one of them. Um, it may not apply to this day and era, but it'll give you a lot better idea. I think the real secret is having good technologists who are very skilled and can create new great things and up on all the latest parts and, ab and abilities to use them and think out ways that have never been done before, like me, and to have somebody like Steve Jobs who wants to have a business and wants to drive a business and make the phone calls and do the paperwork and get other people interested and bring them on board and speak to the public. So that was a really good combination. So you are consulting so, on so Aaron Sorkin. The Apple II is half Steve Jobs. I mean, he was in heavily involved in driving it to the public and giving it a reason for being and marketing and a lot of that stuff. Right. I want to talk about Aaron Sorkin's movie because you are involved in that movie so far. How is that going? What can you tell us about the project and, and what sort of input you've given them and what have they asked you? You know, I can't remember, but I, um, I talk openly. When they ask questions, I give them fill in as far as they want to go, and I'll meet as many times as they want, and I'm just at their service. Do you I think do this not, one's going to be better? I do not know if I'll see the script before the movie. I will not comment on the movie until I see the movie. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know if it's going to, if I'm going to feel. I go to a movie, and you know, even if I hate the story and it's untrue, I could still be very entertained. I wasn't entertained by the, uh, the Kutcher Ash, uh, Jobs movie, um, but I could have been very entertained if it's interesting. I'm following it. I want to see where it goes. And um, like should, Pirates should of Silicon Valley. Should other people see it? Should I see I love Pirates of Silicon Valley that way. I don't. Oh really? You know, yeah. And it wasn't should, should more truthful. Should we see the movie? Should the rest of us see the movie? Should the rest of you see the movie? I can't answer. I, I don't give people direction in life. I'm not one of those people that says, I know what you should do, and you should do it my way or something like that. I'm close to the movie, so it was good for me to see it. I felt good seeing people I knew. They weren't portrayed like they really are, but I know the real people. And so, you've so. talked to other Apple employees. What, what have they said so far? Um, well, some of them, one said, one said he wasn't going to watch the movie because he didn't want to see a fiction. He knew from questions that they'd been asking him about things that were going to be in the movie that never happened, and there were so many of those. So we've been talking a lot recently about innovation at Apple today, and there are critics out there who are saying innovation at Apple is in trouble. Do you agree with that? Um, I don't agree with that because you have to give things a long time to really, really be seen. You'd have to say innovation is not alive at Apple compared to other companies. Now, first of all, the hot products that Steve Jobs really got behind, inspired, focused on, and produced, like the iPod and the iPhone and the iPad, those kind of breakthroughs don't happen every year. So I give Apple some time to come up with something so new and major that's out there, it's hard to think, you know, of, of what, new, what categories are left. How much time do we give them? How much time do we give them? <laughs> You know, I'm glad I'm not a businessman. <laughs> I'm a technologist. <laughs> um, you know, it's very, I, I, but I appreciate the very the difficulty that business people have in bringing products to the market, that it takes a lot of time but, and, um, and to, to build a market. And, you know, there's two categories. One is, A, the, the prolongation of the iPhone. Where does it go from here? What are the new steps? How could an iPhone look different, act different, be different, have different user interfaces? Are there different input and output methodologies that will come along? Those are usually the changes that we call revolutionary, that Apple's you know, big head on. And they usually do it by keeping things secret. I don't know what Apple's doing because it is secret. Right. And that's good for Apple. So let's, one last question. Let's talk about a guy who is a businessman and a technologist. Larry Ellison recently said that we saw Apple with Steve Jobs go up. 
and then go down without Steve Jobs. Then we saw it go up when he came back, and now he says it's going back down. Does it keep going down? Is it going down? Um, I don't think of it that way. I think that Apple throughout all time, even um, long before Apple's real horrible times when everybody said they might go broke and the press got against us, the stock would go would go in half in a few you know a few weeks or a few well, months. Well, I'm not just talking double. about the stock. I'm talking about the but decline it it of innovation. Yes, and people will always blame it on lack of innovation when things are 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 downturning in terms of the company valuation, and got to look out and do do things, and it's 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 till there's time to tell. It's, it's, I wouldn't I wouldn't judge Apple as being out of the innovation sphere yet. All right. Um, I see a lot of things going on in the world, and I always want Apple to be the leader. But sometimes Apple has the bigger surprise than anyone. All right. Well, time will tell. Steve Wozniak, Apple co-founder, so great to hear straight from you what, what you thought of the movie, what you think of Apple today. Always great to have you here on Bloomberg West. Thanks for stopping by. Good. Nice to talk to you.